Welcome back guys, here we are four years and six months after the release of Spider-Verse 1, finally able to talk about Spider-Verse 2 across the Spider-Verse. In today's video we're going to explore all the delicious new things that Spider-Verse 2 has brought to the visual feast that it's known for. I said this years ago and I'll say it again, Spider-Verse changed the entire industry. If you guys work in the animation or games industry, you know the impact that Spider-Verse had on everything. Even to this day, a lot of projects are still feeling the aftershock of what Spider-Verse brought to the table. Companies now are looking to find unique visual identities and they're trying to create their own style and more importantly, they're all trying to incorporate 2D elements. There's an overall flattening of the style. Spider-Verse unleashed the potential for the entire medium. It set us free. In a way, it gave studios permission to be different and a license to make art again. A rising tide lifts all boats, and if the past few years was any indication, I think we're in for one hell of a ride. The question now is, as the flagship production that spearheaded this artistic movement, what did Sony Imageworks do this time, and where are we going next? What new discoveries and technologies were developed to pull this off? Let's take a look at what's in store for us in Spider-Verse 2. In mid-2020, writer and producer Chris Miller wrote, The development of new groundbreaking art techniques being done for the next Spider-Verse movie are already blowing me away. It's going to make the first movie look quaint. And now, we can finally see those tricks in action. Keep in mind that the only footage we have to reference right now are a handful of trailers and clips, so our window into the movie is fairly limited. But even without that, we have enough material to assess the new additions to Sony's look dev arsenal. Alright guys, so I just got back from seeing the movie, and yeah, it's a visual onslaught. I realize now that I can't freely talk about the style without giving away some spoilers or should I say just implications of what you're going to see in the film. The reason is because the styles are very much tied to the characters and their particular worlds. So this is just a gentle warning that if you don't even want to hear about some of the stuff you're going to see, uh, then maybe you should wait until after you've watched it. As for like actual story spoilers, I'm not going to talk about that. Before we even get into specifics, there's an overarching concept that needs to be understood to fully appreciate the intricacies and details of what's being done here. And that concept is that art is a process. Whether it's drawing, painting, making comic books, inking pages, animation, illustration, life drawing, 3D modeling, graffiti, all of it is a gigantic, messy, chaotic, and beautiful process. And one of the reasons I think people respond so well to these movies is because it is the biggest love letter to art ever made. Spider-Verse honors and appreciates the minutia and imperfections of art and the art making process. The film evokes the smell of markers, the shakiness of the pencil, the smudging of erasers, and the excitement that only quick broad strokes can make. The violence of gesture and the energy that you can communicate through visual chaos is used throughout the film. Every artist can relate to this. Spider-Verse celebrates the beautiful duality of both the creative and destructive expressions of art and uses it to heighten or exaggerate how things feel. Every action, every scene, every shape, every line is so potently loaded with emotion and movement and character and intention and that's why everything has so much flavor. It's so damn tasty. Computer graphics are antithetical to the freedom of traditional art by nature. By default, the computer wants to make everything straight lines, grids, uniformity, linear increments, symmetrical shapes, exact copies, and rigid forms devoid of emotion. It takes an artist to break this nature and steer it more towards imperfection to make it organic and give it imbalance, weight, asymmetry, randomness, and unpredictability that is more reflective of life. For Spider-Verse 2, Sony completely obliterates the safe, predictable results we've come to expect from 3D animation. In fact, they've pushed far beyond what they did before and they are now deliberately reincorporating traditional 2D imperfections and flaws back into the 3D mix. They're revealing the scaffolding. They're showing the artist's hand, the rough work, pencil sketches, unpainted, incomplete elements, drafts, perspective guides, stencils, notes, drawing through the form. It's one of the most badass things I've ever seen in my life. This is mad scientist wizardry at play here. It is fully embracing and exposing the toil of the artistic process to the audience, like breaking the fourth wall and being completely cool with it. So far, there is no shot that I think better depicts this art direction philosophy than this shot of Miguel O'Hara charging towards us. To me, this shot screams vertical slice, which in production is like proof of concept for all the different departments, modeling, look dev, rigging, animation, lighting, effects, and compositing. This is the money shot right here, and I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the shots that they used to set the bar for what the team should shoot for in Spider-Verse 2, because it has everything. It has pencils, acrylics, gouache in the background, drawing through, gesture. It feels so explosive and alive. It's exactly like an 11 by 17 illustration board that came to life. One of the wildest things going on here is just how 2D this 3D looks. Like you forget that this is 3D. And one of the coolest details that they've added is the blue Colorace underdrawing. 
So blue color race underdrawings are classic for all artists, especially comic book artists, for doing your rough work. You do your pencil sketch like that, figure out your proportions, all that, and then you go over it with a finer pencil or ink. And they've added that to CG animation. It's completely new. Here is another incredible detail that you really can't appreciate unless you go through this frame by frame. On some of the frames, you'll see this exposed drafting rough work and notes. This particular note shows up on several shots. Imperial Violet DG or DO, Crimson Red, POK. I've tried to look up what those terms mean, but I haven't been able to figure it out. I even asked my mentor who has experience with comic book art, and he can't figure it out either. But basic searches indicate that these are Prisma colors, so Imperial Violet and Crimson Red. Crimson Red is a very popular drawing drafting tool. I'm guessing that this note is just indicating two separate elements, whether it's the background and a character. So maybe it's saying do the backgrounds in Imperial Violet and the character in Crimson Red. Something to that effect, but either way, it's just a really cool touch. In November 2022, lead Spider-Verse animator Nick Kondo wrote, In Across the Spider-Verse, we looked to Sid Mead's vision of the future for inspiration when designing how Spider-Man 2099's world would look. And that makes so much sense. I've talked about him before on my channel, but Sid Mead is considered like one of the grandfathers of concept art. And the entire look of Miguel O'Hara's world feels like a living, breathing concept art. Not only the objects in his world, but even the character himself, he's got these lines that overshoot the shape of his shoulder around the deltoid. And that's a very concept art kind of look. It's when you kind of follow through with a line and not terminate it just at the edge. You actually continue through and it really helps define the shape. And this effect even extends to the watch, the item that they call the watch that allows them to travel between the multiverses. And this leads to one of the key ingredients of Spider-Verse 2 is that they've really incorporated construction lines. Construction lines are typically used by artists to help guide and place features on a face or body. So you'll occasionally see these axis lines running vertically or horizontally, usually in the middle, so they're mid lines, to help place features like eyes or the nose. And generally speaking, these are lines that are eventually erased away, right? You don't even want to show that rough work. But Spider-Verse deliberately reincorporates that rough work into the CG to kind of give it a little bit more of a traditional feel and life. To make it feel like these are characters that are popping into life out of a sketch. Much like they did in Spider-Verse 1 where characters had very unique treatments. So Spider-Man Noir had a very black and white halftone pattern treatment. Penny Parker was a little bit more anime and Peter Porker was very cartoony. The characters in Spider-Verse 2 also have their own looks. Probably the most extreme in terms of 2D, old school, Leonardo da Vinci type drawings is the character of Vulture. This character honestly doesn't look 3D at all. It looks completely hand-drawn. And the coolest part about his look is that even his smoke effects are drawn in the same 2D, flat, sketchy style that he is. The character of Jessica Drew, or Spider-Woman, is almost more of a 2D cell shade. And unlike Spider-Verse 1, which didn't feature any outlines, this character does have outlines. In fact, we have another character that features outlines in the character of Pav. The interesting thing about this character's outlines though is they're not like tight around the outline of the body. They almost look off in the same way that there's the inverted hull method. So for video games to make outlines, for say like an anime type look, you invert the model so that it's inside out and you give it a completely black shader. And the amount that you scale it beyond the original model would be the thickness of the outline. But the one problem with that is that at certain angles, you actually start to lose definition of the outline. And that's actually kind of what they are doing here, but deliberately. So it's a very interesting outline look that's a little bit unique and deliberately a little bit off. His shading's also more simplified in like a two-tone way, kind of similar to like Jet Set Radio Future. To be honest, his character overall kind of looks like a real-time game version of a tune shader. Then there's the character of Hobie Brown, Spider-Punk, who has an absolutely insane look. He looks like a collage of 80s punk rock posters, and I honestly have no idea how they accomplished this effect. It's really impressive. He has a very grungy, posterized, paper cutout effect. It almost feels like every tune shade, every cell shade, every kind of 2D look that you can get is in this film somewhere in Spider City. All the spider people are different. They've got outlines, they've got shading, they've got cross-hatching, and everything in between. So all the bases are covered. One of the most prominent new looks in the film is the pastel dreamlike universe of Gwen Stacy. This also happens to be one of the rarest visuals to find among the various clips and trailers. It's a very painterly effect that is loose and sketchy but also quite minimalistic. It is heavily expressionistic and the colors change from shot to shot, more to accommodate the changing tone of the dialogue than to be literal colors. There's a moment in the film where a character speaks from the heart and the backgrounds start to weep like bleeding watercolor in sympathetic response. It's definitely one of the more dramatic stylistic changes, and I think the creators have done that to very clearly distinguish the realms of the multiverse from the main Miles Morales timeline. 
There are other aspects of the film that also feel painterly. There can sometimes be a very glassy, low opacity layering of render elements that make the 3D models almost look like Photoshop digital paintings or ghosts. The artist that immediately comes to mind is Android Jones, one of the earliest digital multimedia artists known for his extremely complex, psychedelic brushstrokes and layering. This still frame of Miles and Gwen holding hands illustrates this perfectly. This look really complements the idea of different multiverses colliding with each other. Another new addition to the film are the black and white anticipation burst cards. Do you guys remember that plane explosion scene in The Incredibles? Brad Bird storyboarded that inverted frame for that explosion. He knew way before the movie was made that he wanted some contrast for the brightness of the explosion by having a few inverted frames. That effect is used once in The Incredibles to great effect. Spider-Verse does that concept but on steroids. If we frame by frame this electric blast, you can see the progression of how these anticipation burst cards work. It starts off with a very comic book looking black and white image, and then it progressively gets more and more exaggerated. As it starts to implode, the line work starts to converge on itself and get way more dramatic. These frames look like scratch art, where there's a black coating over the paper and you scratch it off to draw inverted lines. And then there's actually a frame of anticipation on top of the anticipation and we go back to white with black line work. These frames are not intended to be seen, they're intended to be felt. And animators love to do this kind of thing with frame play. And it's definitely something that happens on a subconscious level. You're not aware that it's happening, but you feel it. Another variant of this idea is the green pen line. At their peak brightness, the explosions reduce the outlines of the characters to wiry, thin, pen-like scribbles. Like the essence of their forms are being held on by a thread. There's way more stylistic stuff that I could mention, but I think I want to leave it for you to experience and enjoy yourself. Anyways guys, these were really the standout visual effects and new additions to Spider-Verse 2 for me. When you look back at Spider-Verse 1, the visuals really do almost look quaint. That doesn't necessarily diminish that movie for me, because for all the new tricks, I think there was equally something unique about the first film that was offered in terms of the richness of the environment art. Real quick, I just want to say I've got some friends and former classmates who worked on this movie and I just want to say you guys should be super proud. It's absolutely beautiful and I think people are going to love it. Congratulations. I hope you guys have a blast watching Across the Spider-Verse. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.